This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Netflix. It's time once again to pop that box, and I'm talking about pop three here, so email time, let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Lucas asks, I was recently watching your show and a viewer emailed in to inquire about VPN traffic for security. It was generally said that it was more secure to use a secure link, I believe the viewer termed it, which she meant VPN. Using Hamachi, I have established a pseudo VPN between my netbook and laptop so that I can remote in. I can run SSH with dy dynamic port forwarding, effectively establishing a SOC server, so I understand what is meant by a secure connection. I meant I do have one query. I understand the security on the remote end, i.e., you know, at the coffee shop. Right, when but, you're at your laptop, yeah. wireless in, yeah. But who's to say that it is secure on the local end, i.e., at home? and that someone isn't listening at that end. In theory, one could be tapping into your internet while sitting outside your house, but because you aren't there, you wouldn't have any idea. I recognize that it is highly unlikely, supposing you have a direct and wired connection to your ISP, hopefully, and segmented wireless access and proper security, but who at home actually does that? Well, That's a good question. yes, I mean, <laughs> really, this conversation is about trust. And so there was actually a slide in my South by Southwest Ooh, talk trust? about you know um, about how like when people connect to the pineapple mm -hmm. and I and I, the way I worded it was just so that people would kind of like think about this and I said just like your internet service provider at home I am now your gateway to the internet mm -hmm. so I can eavesdrop and then that the noodling is like you're the man in oh, the middle oh wait well guess who else is the man in the middle who comcast time warner cox at&t you yep. name it you know oh, like yeah. and you know they're Rolling up the butt when you're doing well, they, they don't. Well, they're you bad. would. That's the thing is, it's like some big nameless corporation. When it's like a hacker yeah. sniffing your stuff, like suddenly, you know, you are specifically being targeted. Or maybe I'm just targeting 20 noobs at the coffee shop, but I'm not an internet service provider in the traditional means. Right. And and those nameless corporations, you kind of just figure, well, you know, those guys, you know, there's enough, you know, people there running the knock and stuff that if somebody were to be doing something, they would get caught or yeah. they you, would be against the, so. it's probably against we their policy now, then, and things of that nature but it's um it's again that same thing so even if you are to do a ssh tunnel securely to home or a vpn tunnel home you're really all you're doing is shifting where the unencrypted endpoint is you're shifting it back to yeah. your house yeah so like when you go down to starbucks your unencrypted endpoint is right yeah. here on your machine you bring your own encryption, now that endpoint is at home. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer to do it at a virtual private server, but then again, what's to say that the people running your virtual private servers aren't sniffing the output? And you're right, and unfortunately, this is going to be the case no matter where you put your traffic. Weetopia, I don't know if they're run by the government, I just use them to watch the BBC iPlayer. Yeah. You know, um, Viper VPN is another one. You know, it's the same thing mm -hmm. with like Tor exit nodes. I mean, how many Tor exit nodes are being run by the NSA? That's a good yeah, question. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. And at least with those, there's enough of them distributed that you're not always going out the same exit node. Yeah, so, you're always changing it around. So are you anonymous whenever you're doing that kind of stuff since you're on tour? Or? Not that anonymous, but yeah. Okay. Um, and so there's no real good answer there in the sense that eventually, for most traffic that is, you're going to have to come out unencrypted yeah. at some point. And, do, and, and it's not like you could have a VPN directly to Twitter and a VPN to Facebook and a VPN to all of those things and then directly right into their, you know, server rooms and into their databases and having the stuff. Oh, if only. <laughs> well, that would be a nightmare. I mean, that's the idea with HTTPS or TLS, you know, right. that's yeah. the idea is like, oh, I go to HTTPS, you know, Twitter, and then there's SSL sniff and SSL mm -hmm. strip and things yeah. of that nature to have fun with those connections. But um, that is something that's easy to do. You can type it into your address bar, and that's why, like the media, the major media is always like, "Oh, look for the S in the address bar, and then you're secure." Well, y that's one layer of security. Yeah. Uh, a VPN helps, you know, when you're a target for, you know, like I can I can stalk you and find you at a coffee shop and sniff your stuff there. I'm you probably <laughs> not going to break into your internet service provider at Comcast or whatever and sniff you at the trunk. That's probably not going to happen. Yeah, probably not. So it's a really just a matter of trust. I get super paranoid. Um, See, I'm not that paranoid. This is really yeah. like, this right here is a conversation about, you know, trust and paranoia hacking and yeah. what you do to protect yourself and what's your comfort level. And um, yeah, so I really, really want to hear you guys' feedback. I know I say I throw it out there all the time, but really this is a conversation that, you know, it's been going on for forever. 
or if it hasn't, it really should be because mm -hmm. it's just about like, you know, where it's do you put your packets? You mm -hmm. Inherent trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love to violate it just because, you know, there's, there's always like in between different nodes, there's always, you know, there has to be at some point in time an inherent yeah. trust. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for a lot of people, that's their home connection. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they, yeah, me too, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, yes, feedback at hackvibe.org or hit us up on the forums, you know, we'll be chatting. And IRC, you know, I'm on Freenode and IRC.hack5. So. IRC.hackvibe.org? Yep. Is that the web interface? That's the, um, no, I don't know if they have a web interface one. If you go to hackvibe.org oh, okay. and click chat, you'll find it. Anyway. Oh, so it is there. There you go. All right, cool. Yes. So, what do we do now? <laughs> we go to an ad. <laughs> oh, well, we're going to take a break then. So, you do that, and I'm going to go disconnect my cable modem. Netflix streams TV episodes and movies directly to your home, saving you time and money. Instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, your Mac, or right to your TV with your PS3, Xbox 360, or Nintendo Wii console. For a limited time, get your free trial membership. Go to netflix.com slash hak5 and sign up now. Netflix is now available in the UK and Ireland. Our viewers over there can get the same free trial as in the US. Just check out netflix.co.uk slash hack5 or netflix.ie slash hack5. It's time once again for the part of the show where we read your emails and extract the JPEGs and hand them over to Paul and say, Paul, put up the JPEG. What is it of? Skunkwork sent us a photo of his rad setup with eight monitors. Eight that's, monitors. That's okay, rad. That's what? hard to do. Okay, so tell me this. Why do you need eight monitors other than obviously a flight simulator? But what? Uh, hello. One for every application you could ever possibly run. Ooh, matrix wallpaper. Paul, oh, come on, well, back yeah. me up here. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's a really good Paul's point. Paul's got three monitors. <laughs> I, used to, I at one point rocked awesome. four. We built a crazy rig that had See, eight. See, I just do two, and that's it's really perfectly hard to do. fine for me. They say there's diminishing return after two. Ah. Oh, I okay. say you need that center one, or else your crosshair is going to be between two, and then how are you supposed to get headshots? I mean, really, people. <laughs> well, I just use one of my monitors for Skyrim, but that's just me. Really? Yeah, oh, I just use, use one. You Skyrim on the PC. Yeah. That must be such a different experience. It's awesome. All right. Well, anyway, before you can send we get your photos over to feedback at hack5.org. Subject line technolest. Make it easier for us to uh, find them. Yeah, we grew up through all the time. I totally went through all the feedback emails yesterday. So proud of myself. <sighs> yes. I didn't it's, answer it's something all of that them, we can't answer all of them, but we do read them all. <sighs> all right. Let's talk about last week's trivia question because it was a good one. Last week's trivia question was, the default player skin in Minecraft is nicknamed what? What is it? Steve. Oh. For reals. Yeah? Yeah, apparently his name is Steve. Did you but... see the Lego Minecraft? Dude. Wait, what Lego? It looks wicked. What? Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's give okay. Paul more work. Paul, throw it up. <laughs> <laughs> this week's question is, NFC support, near field communication, was introduced in what version of Android? Uh, the Raspberry Pi. No, but uh, I really want to get one on the show. Um, chocolate mousse. Not yet. <laughs> uh, we key lime pie. Are we on? No, we're not at key lime pie. Pecan Sandies. They're still talking about that one. What? Pecan Zebras. Sandies. Ho hos. Swiss cake rolls. <gasps> Yum. Okay, answer your. <laughs> Answer the question over at hackfive.org slash trivia for a chance to win some swag. Awesome. Yes, and of course, you know that you can find us at hackfive.org slash follow. That's where uh, all the places you can do the social stuff. Mmm, deliciously social. And you can go over to hackshop, hakshop.com, and check out all of our cool goodies. Oh, we have a new floppy dongle manipulator there. A going, what? Going, yeah, it's, a, it's so cool. It's, it's for manipulating dongles. And uh, and it's all. Oh, this guy. And yeah. you know what's awesome about this for you me, a, because I ship them all, yeah. is it's like incredibly unbreakable. Yeah, it's so durable. I love <laughs> I this thing. And a lot it's of the awesome. other ones like only go certain directions. I was like, ah, this guy's to like 360 in every access. Yeah, and so I can ship it in. I've got like three of them on my great. desk and I've like been building stuff with them because, yeah, anyway, it's a floppy dongle manipulator. But when your dongle's not pointed the right direction. Okay, um, you can also check out the hack tips. H-A-K-Tips. Yeah. 
And we'll see you next week. I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Moore. Trust your technologist. <laughs> I need a Dongle. Nap. Dongle. Dongle, 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 dongle. Flip your dongle at me. Hmm? Ow, sorry. <laughs> To the break? No, we just had a break. So let's do it now. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blooper! Checking the email. Double blooper? What does it mean?